What's up guys, Steve here from Warrior Planet Tanks. Happy New Year to everybody. Let's get this year started. So, I'm going to start where we left off with the Miami Vice tank. And if you guys are wondering why it's so dark in here, it's because these things are almost impossible to film. And I pissed them off. I did a uh, water change today and did some tinkering around and they don't want to have anything to do with me. So right now in the front right there what you see is a Pseudomugil C Indoor Salus and also I have in here some Pseudomugil Signifer. And this tank isn't really quite complete yet. I did find the fish I wanted to stock. But this filter This bad boy got to go. It's unsightly. It served its purpose. It helped me establish a pretty good bio. Overall, I'm actually happy with this tank. Took the Murray River Rainbows out. They did their job. Um, the sword tails. Yeah. I'm not tearing this tank up to catch them. I'm surprised I was able to catch those rainbows. But uh, there's one left in here. Believe it or not. It was able to take the high salinity, so that was cool. I really just wanted to do a quick update. Wish you guys Happy New Year. And talk a little bit about what I chose to stock this tank with. As you can see there, let's zoom in. There's a blue, there's a blue leg hermit. This one actually changed its shell three times. You can see I'm rocking an Astraeus uh, shell right now. And he's looking good. There's, they're all in here. And you know what? I got MTS in here, guys. Had no, I, I have no idea where they came from. I'm thinking maybe they came in the shipment with the CN Dorsalis. I do not know. But when I turn the lights off and wake up in the morning, it's blanketed with Malaysian trumpet snails. So, kind of cool experiment. Malaysian trumpet snails can take brackish water. The only thing I'm worried about, of course, is this substrate is anaerobic because I use mineral, mineral mud with the layer of uh, two different layers of uh, sand grade. So, as long as they don't gas my tank, I think they kind of add to it and look cool. And plus, they actually eat some of the debris in here because I really don't have a cleanup crew other than a few uh, other saltwater snails which I have yet to identify so if you guys want to help out with that that would be cool and the uh, hermit crabs of course so let's talk about the fish these are actually my favorite I don't know why but I love them these are the pseudomugil signifer really plucky fish the males are beautiful it's Pacific blue eye it's one of the store names and they're hard to get. I actually had to get these through a friend of a friend of a friend kind of sort of and they were expensive however I got them around October time frame they've acclimated quite well as you can see they're all fat and happy and it's kind of cool because I got the sea and dorsalis and the signifers oh wow did you see that look at that male and they they cohabitate really well both of them have uh, overlapping territories in their natural habitat, which is Australia. And they, they look really good. These guys took well to the high salinity I'm running. When I did a refract on this water, when I did my water change earlier, which is why it's kind of still cloudy too. I put some more tan and tea in here as well. It was running at around 16. And I was like, oh Jesus, you know, it's damn near a full-blown saltwater tank, you know, four more points will be at 20, it'll be full-blown saltwater. But it's really high-end on Brack, and these guys are loving it. I'm going to zoom in on one of the C. Dorsalis males, if I can get this thing to focus. See, this is what happens when you don't shoot YouTube videos. There you go, there's a C. Dorsalis right there. And he, look, he looks great. But they habitate all levels. I found that the C. indoor salis are actually a lot happier in the upper levels of the tank. 
and here's a better view of it you know and if you guys are wondering like I said it's dark I had to turn off every light in the house just to get a half decent shot but I really just want to put something out to let you guys know that no nothing happened I'm still in the game this ain't my job it's my hobby but I love you guys and I'm gonna keep sharing like I said I wanted you guys to see this tank through to the end look at this it's a treat enjoy it look at those guys spar this is why I love the signifer so much the males are so stunning you know and I mean the Sandor house are beautiful in the picture when I was looking at the different pseudomutuals that I wanted to run in this tank they're, they're beautiful however they're pretty but they're sissies though you know these guys here they are like Steve-O they're peacocks man they look good and they can fight I love it look at those males you know I know I'm not going on camera you know, I know I just said I look good, but I need a haircut, dude. And it's like, you know, I'm not even finna do that to y'all right now. I want y'all to see me looking good. However, I just kind of wanted to get on here, talk crazy for a little bit, let you guys get a look at the new inhabitants as is. I want to throw some more botanicals in here, so I'm, uh, I got some on order. I want to tighten it up a little bit more. And this, the filter's going thinking about glass lily pipes don't know yet I think we're gonna go over to a canister haven't quite made up my mind because I don't want to disturb this substrate and I, I kinda like that lazy lagoon feel you know it's kinda cool the HOB works it serves its purpose I wanted a good hard cycle these fish are a expensive and B sensitive and I mean this guy he wants to show off now so that's cool you know so they're happy they really don't tolerate water I gotta say pseudomutuals are probably some of the hardest fish I've kept these are not really your run-of-the-mill gypsy style fish when they're happy they're happy but you gotta make love to them they don't tolerate any parameters and swings they don't tolerate nitrates nitrites at all they absolutely do not tolerate poor water trust me I'm gonna be honest with y'all I've had the signal first haven't lost one this is my second round of seeing dorsalis. They do not tolerate poor water. And I've had to baby, baby, baby them the whole time I've had them. But all in all, it looks great. I'm thinking of something for a bottom dweller. Maybe I was suggested by a close, a close friend that I trust uh, a lot. I was suggested to put some uh, bumblebee gobies in here because they'll take Brack too. And I think that would uh, turn it up a little bit. They would look cool. They would really like to dig around in the substrate with, the, with these guys here. So let me know what you guys think about that. Give me some suggestions on that. My camera just went into macro mode, so excuse the blur. Let's see if I can get it out of macro mode. There you go. All right, there's a good look at this guy forging around. You know, I was kind of leery about putting the blue leg hermits in here like I said in the first installment of this video series but then I started thinking with common sense and I was like hey man the hermit crabs A, B, salinity fluctuate all the time and C why wouldn't they be able to survive sub 20 salinity and I've had these guys in here since I set it up these were some of the first creatures to go in this tank and as you can see they're kicking around just fine in fact like I said this guy right here has changed shells three times so guess what I'm gonna get some more I think I told you maybe there was five six of them in here maybe eight I don't know they come out when they want to I'm gonna put some more because the tank can handle it and I'm also gonna go out on a limb and try to see if Australia snails can rock in here I got knee rights in here finally I do not know where they are and I'm waiting on some more to come in because I don't these were actually pulled from a nano shrimp tank that I had and I didn't acclimate with nothing I just threw them in and they're rocking out pretty tough I don't want to put too much knee right in here because as you can see there's no algae in this tank not not a spot of it so I don't want them to starve and I don't want to introduce algae into this tank so I'm gonna leave well enough alone however a few uh, Australia's would look cool because there's a little bit of coralline here and there on some of the wood so I think that would be fine 
But real quick guys, I just wanted to throw that out there. Give you guys a quick look and update on this tank. This is just a quick video for you guys to see that yes, I'm alive. No, I didn't get deported, incarcerated or anything like that. And we're going to start 2019 off again. Who knows? Maybe I'll do seven months worth of videos this year and you know something stupid will happen and I'll take a hiatus for a few months who knows stay tuned but guys like this video don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you already haven't and share it if you feel so inclined to do so help me out with this algorithm y'all press the like button 10 minutes 20 minutes whatever you know 35 seconds who cares but yeah smash that like button and thank you guys for watching i love you guys like i said happy new year I got big plans for 2019 i got some great footage coming up i was able to actually go out of country and get some pretty cool raw footage so i'm going to share that with you guys as soon as i get off my you know what and edit it and hopefully you guys enjoy that as well so this is it this is Steve from Warrior Planet Tanks. Let me zoom in on these guys. I'm going to let you enjoy that for a few minutes. Let you enjoy these guys getting their spar on. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys that stay subscribed to me. I love it. I love you guys. I'm not going to disappoint you. This is Steve from Warrior Planet Tanks. I'm out.